you know, teach some of the things which I've learned over the years um, working with this tool stack, um, you know, maybe convey that knowledge, some of the best practices, um, and also perhaps to, uh, rant is the wrong word, a very, very quiet uh, uh, little bit of pushing of how you can do, how you can make your visualizations uh, better, how you can improve the user interaction. Um, so how you can uh, generally make your life or make your make the applications you build make the visualizations work better for your users um, so for those of you who may not be familiar with uh, uh, how we you know produce uh, usually rich client applications have been thought this is sort of the stack that we're building on so we use traits, uh, traits UI um, to do sort of our basic application building, to do the event notification uh, uh, system, to, to make the application work the way that we expect an application to work. And so in there, there is also traits UI and now the new enable framework, which is uh, you know, coming out. Um, so that's sort of our basic application toolkit. But then for plotting, you also need good 2D drawing, and so there's the Kiva toolkit, um, which is basically an API layer which sits on top of a number of different backends, including AG, PDF, and so it allows you to produce uh, the same output from you know, in a series of different formats. So with those two tools, you can get uh, a certain distance, but then to really get good uh, interactive visualization, you need some sort of interaction layer. And so sitting on top of those two things is uh, a toolkit called Enable, which is basically merging together traits and Kiva so that you now have drawing which can react to events from the GUI, you know, mouse clicks, keyboard events, and so forth. Um, but it's just a general interactive drawing framework. It doesn't know anything about plotting or uh, how to make, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, line plots or scatter plots or image plots or so forth. And then on top of that, there is the actual charcoal uh, plotting framework. And so these things were built up over a number of years, uh, many of them before I came to Enthought as an employee, uh, Peter Wang being sort of the primary architect of a lot of this stack, but there are many other people involved in it as well. So sort of this is, this is what we're doing with, this is what we're working with. And so you can actually you know, produce a nice little interactive application like this pretty easily, right? Um, so I've actually got this sitting here. Um, you know, I can run it. I can bring it up. Right, so this is just taking an image from uh, Scikit's image, you know, but I want to be able to control the, uh, you know, the various aspects of how the data gets pushed. So if I want to change the gamma of the curve, I can, you know, move the slider around and you can see that it's updating live. And this is not a lot of code, right? This is uh, less than 200 lines of code, about 150 lines of code. Um, so you can build up something like this you know, very, very quickly. Um, this example, by the way, uh, it was I did something like this for a customer project earlier this year. Um, unfortunately, there's proprietary code, so I've quickly put together something which looks a bit like it to, to demonstrate some of the things which we went through in the uh, in building out uh, this application. But sort of where I'd like to go with this is there are some problems with this. And if you've done any work in data visualization, you're almost certainly aware of Edward Tufte and his work. Uh, he deals mainly with static images, but he has a lot of you know, good advice for anyone who cares about data visualization. And so his in you know, one of his books, The Visual Display of Quantitative, Quantitative Information, he has these sorts of rules for making your visualizations better. So above all else, to the data, maximize the data ink ratio, erase non-data ink, erase redundant data ink, and then revise and edit. Here's a whole chapter sort of showing how he improves the plot going through these, these processes. So if you go back and look at this, well, if you think about it, there's clearly a problem here, right? We've got portions of the UI 
taking up huge amounts of space. I mean, even this plot here is taking up huge amounts of space and not really giving the user that much information. So how can we make this a better user interface, displaying the information that the user wants in a better way, and you know, generally making this a, a much better experience for, for everyone concerned? So what we want to do is we want to start Oh, actually, there's, a, there's a point here. Um, where we're dealing with computers, so it's not ink that we care about. It's pixels, right? We want to clean up the pixels. So the first thing which you sort of want to do in this situation is you want to clean up the plots where you can. So before you even start worrying about any of the interactive stuff that I'm going to talk about, you should be thinking about, am I displaying my information in the best way possible? So if you look at our plot here, um, I've already done the cleanup, but if you were to just do the standard uh, charcoal plots without any further uh, uh, adjustment, you'd be getting axes around these guys which really aren't conveying any further information. Right? You'd be getting grids which aren't telling you anything that you, you really need to know. So there's some amount of cleanup which you do just, just as a matter of course right? in charcoal you remove the axes, remove the grid, remove the padding around the plot. So you get a, a much cleaner view of the data when you don't actually care about those axes, right? For an image plot, not really relevant. For something like a histogram, probably not relevant. You might care about the, the Y scale, but probably not the X scale. Um, but then you want to start to improve the interactions by shifting the interactions from things like sliders and text boxes into the visualization itself. And to do that, pretty soon you, see, you need to write Charco tools that allow you to create new interactions with the code, with the, the visualization. And when you start to do this, and this is sort of something which I've gone through over the past few years, you are very, very tempted to write one tool to rule them all, right? Here we have a histogram. And there's a bunch of stuff we want to do with a histogram. We want to adjust the gamma. We want to adjust the brightness and the, the, uh, the contrast. We want to clip to high and low values. We, we want to modify these things. And so you're really tempted to write one big charcoal tool which sits on top of your plot and allows you to adjust these things in, in an interactive way all together. And a lot of charcoal's tools are written in that way. If you look at some of the code in the charcoal code base, there's this you know, after several iterations, the better selecting zoom tool, which does zoom and pan, and uh, it, if you click with a certain thing, it draws an overlay, and then zooms on that overlay, and it's all one monolithic thing. And it's problematic. It doesn't play nicely with others. Uh, the interactions become hard to track and debug. I mean, it's got a, the better selecting zoom tool. If you hit escape, it takes you back to your original orientation, unless you happen to have panned, and there's sort of a bug there. It, it can be really hard to get a nice, consistent user uh, feel from these big widgets. Um, and so what I've found over the past few years is it's, it's better to use smaller, simpler tools with more uh, easy to understand interactions. And so we've been folding some of these tools into the code base. So the, the one which I uh, have sort of been working on recently, this is an attribute drag tool, and it's really, really dumb, right? We use traits as our lowest level. A trait is more or less just a fancy property or attribute on a class, and all an attribute drag tool does is when the user drags on the screen, it changes the trait. That's all it does. But with that simple interaction, you can get a lot of stuff done. So here we're just saying we're setting up an attribute drag tool. It's on, a, on our plot. The object which we're modifying is our unit map, which is what we're using to, to map the data from uh, its original to the adjusted image. And we're adjusting the, act, the, the uh, intercept attribute. And that's all this does. Um, it's also mapper aware. So there's a question about when you drag the mouse, are you going to do it in screen space or are you going to do it in data space? And when you're interacting with data, most of the time you care about interactions with the data space, right? When we're interacting with this, 
right? If a user is dragging here, they want this to move as though they were moving the plot. And so if you turn on this tool, it's pretty straightforward, not a lot of difference in the code, but you can now click on this and it drags back and forth. Right? And you can see that this is just an artifact of traits, but it's really nice. You can see that as, as I drag this back and forth, the intercept uh, slider is actually sliding in synchronization. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's the, that's the first step. And of course you can do that with, with all of the other, uh, all of the other traits. Um, you know, all of the other sliders that we had. If you want slightly better interactions, you can also uh, uh, have things like there's a plot drag tool, um, which I think we need to fold into Charco. It's not in the code base yet. But basically, it allows you to uh, do hit testing. So instead of just dragging anywhere on the plot, you can drag on, say, the plot itself. But if you click outside the plot, then it doesn't move. And again, these are fairly simple things. Um, you know, the code for this is maybe 50 lines, less than 50 lines. Um, so not too hard to make work. Um, so let's see, if you, I guess the next thing which you need after that is, so if you're going to get rid of these sliders, then you need to give the user some numerical feedback at least some of the time. And so then you need to start writing overlays. Uh, another little overlay that we've written here is a simple inspector overlay. This is part of the standard Charco code base now. Um, basically, you say that I am just looking at this particular trait, and as it changes, it's going to display the value of that trait as a text. Right? It'll say intercept, and then display the, uh, the value to two decimal places. So if we, you can see what this looks like. Right, now if I slide this, I get a nice little pop-up showing me the numerical value. And once I've done that, then I don't need to have that slider at all. And you can see that I'm starting to get more and more, at least data space, still can clean this up a bit, but uh, it, it's getting better and better. Um, also in this plot now, I've turned on, if I hold down the shift key, it modifies the slope. If I hold down the control key, it modifies the gamma. Right? So you can get interactions fairly easily with these basic tools uh, using, you know, using the same, same, uh, uh, same objects that we talked about before, uh, earlier. So, but sometimes a numerical overlay is not the right way to do it. Um, so sometimes you want to add little indicators on the plot, sliders, that sort of thing. Um, so for example, with the high and low values, you really don't want to have those constantly being displayed in textual form. It's much easier to see with, say, just a couple of vertical lines where your high and low values are. And so again, it's fairly easy to write an overlay which just looks at a particular trait. Again, very, very dumb. Looks at a particular trait, a particular attribute on an object, and just draws a line at that particular point. Um, and so to illustrate that, this is sort of the next the next version. So now here we've still got our high and lows, but we've just added a very, very simple overlay which marks the points for the high and low. Okay, and the code for this, again, not very complex. I mean, this is the code which is doing the actual drawing. There's a little bit more here, but we're basically taking the value that we're looking at, we're mapping it uh, to screen coordinates, and then we're doing a little bit of, this is Kiva code, where we're drawing, uh, uh, we're clipping to the rectangle that we're looking at, and we're drawing some lines of a particular color, width, and style at a particular point, you know, particular x location, the full y height. So, you know, again, this is not hard code to write. It's doing something very, very simple. But when you start gluing these things, these simple things together, you can start getting quite nice uh, effects. Okay. Um, so the last little piece to this is, if you remember, our plot drag tool was allowing us to interact with particular parts of the, of the visualization. So if we add to that custom overlay a hit test function, then the plot drag tool can work with it. And now, just by adding this little snippet of code, 
we've got something which you can actually click on and drag around. And so if you look at this, the last version of the code, which also does a little bit of cleanup and moves things around, you end up with, right, we've got the histogram. We don't need a lot of space for the histogram, right? We can move it around down here. And now we can click on these sliders and we can, I can actually, oops, there's a little bit of an issue here, but you can see that we can move this back and forth. Uh, right? We can move the intercept and so forth. And so we've taken something which is taking up a lot of screen real estate, in fact, taking away the interest, you know, what the, the person using the application, you know, what they should be interested in, which is you know, the actual image and getting the image to look right. We've put the, the controls, we've made them very self-contained. Um, there is a slight, you know, you'll need to give a little bit of hints maybe about the different ways that the user can interact with them. Um, I haven't done this here, but, you know, uh, tooltip or something like that showing that, you know, click shift to drag or something like that. Um, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can take sort of the traditional easy to use, you know, sliders and text fields and turn it into a, a better uh, view of your data and a better way to interact with your data. Um, so um, just to sort of summarize, um, the sorts of things which you want to do, uh, you want to maximize your data pixel ratio, um, use simple tools and overlays and try and make them do one thing and one thing only and for any complex interactions, put those into just a pure model object which doesn't know anything about the UI, which handles things like, you know, I haven't emphasized it, but those high and lows, you don't want the low to be bigger than the high. So there's some interactions there, but again, it's all better handled by the model. Um, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Right? It's unfortunately not that well documented, but it's not too hard to get yourself down to the level of writing enable and charcoal drawing code. These new simpler widgets which we've been using, uh, simpler tools, the code is pretty easy to understand. It's a good place to get yourself uh, you know, started. And then above all else, show the data. I mean, this is all about the data. It's not about writing really fancy widgets which do you know, cool effects. It's all about communicating and allowing your users to interact with your data. So anyway, to wrap up, um, resources. Um, so I think pretty much all of the tools and overlays that, we've, that I demoed here, that I showed, they're generic enough and useful enough that they'll eventually find their way, some of them already have, but they'll all eventually find their way into the Charco or Enable2 uh, code bases. Uh, the examples which I've been working with, they're on GitHub. Uh, so if you go to my GitHub repo, there's uh, 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 repo for the for this this talk. Uh, if you have any questions, my email is uh, cwebster at nthought.com. So, and with that, I think I probably have enough time for a question or two. Yep. Um, you sort of said it at the very end, but almost at the side. But one thing that when you first showed your demo with the click and drag and so on, I thought, how would you, the idea of getting rid of the maximizing <coughs> pixels on data and not on all the other stuff. Right. Great. You want to how do you right. find out what you can do with it? Right. So what, what, what you need is something like a hover text, right? Which, yeah. yeah. If you had like your little, your little uh, circles on your maximum, right. if they look clickable, what, what does that do? I can do that. But right. if you sort of click in on the whole thing, it's like, well, how would you know? Like, yeah, either a, right. So, um, like yeah. So some, sometimes you can do feedback, like you know, highlight something when it's clickable or you know, when somebody hovers over it, you can indicate. And again, that's a fairly easy interaction to get going. Yeah.